everyone, and welcome to Josters. In this video, I will discuss my top 10 favourite roller coasters in the world. This is my first face to face video, and I'd love to hear from you on what your top 10 roller coasters is. Now, my top 10 roller coasters is a bit uh, different from most people because I haven't been on many of the big, bigger rides like Steel Vengeance or Voyage or any of those coasters. But um, with the list I have, I think you'll be quite shocked with what I have on ranked on this list. But without further ado, let's get into it, into this top 10 favourite locusts by Josters. And number 10 is Goliath at Wallaby Holland. Now, this coaster is absolutely massive. It sits right at the back of the park, which I will say the location at Wallaby Holland wasn't the best, but it is a phenomenal intimate mega coaster and definitely worth checking out at Wallaby Holland. And it's my second favourite at the park, so I love the colour scheme, that blue over the lake is really gorgeous looking. And in terms of the coaster itself, you go down the first drop, get some quite a good floater airtime, you go over the first airtime, proper airtime hill, which you get some solid ejector over the top of that. Following on that you go into your first helix, and they are really intense helixes. You go at them from with some speed, and you almost um, grey out on them. But yeah, they are definitely one of the most intense parts of the ride. Following on from that, you go onto another airtime hill, and then into another helix, and then you go into one of my favourite parts of the ride, the three consecutive bunny hills towards the end of the ride, where you get thrown out your seat three times. This ejector airtime is probably the best on the ride. Towards the end, towards the end, you then have one final helix into the station, and bam, your ride's over. What a fantastic intimate creation! Now, in terms of the coaster, like theme and wise, I think it could be, do with a bit of cleanup, maybe a bit of a paint job, just to give it a bit more nicer. And I also think there should be some attractions like near Goliath, just to just to fill out the area basically because Goliath's all the way out on its own on its like own little island and it's got nothing else around it so I think Wallaby Holland should do something with that area but in terms of the coaster itself very good coaster and I forgot to mention one element <laughs> whoops it was before the first helix you have an outer bank airtime hill now that did give you some solid ejector as well but I don't find it nearly as good as the bunny hills towards the end. So, um, yeah. So that's my thoughts on Goliath. A fantastic coaster. And one of the, probably one of the best, better intermins out there. Anyway. And that's why it ends up on my number 10 spot. Next up, and my number 9 spot is Troy at Toverland. Now, Troy is a fantastic ride. It's a GCI twister layout wooden coaster, full of ejector airtime, and it's so intense. If you ever go around those hel helixes at full speed, it is just mind-boggling how how good those helixes are. Good lateral forces on them. You also have the good solid ejector airtime hill, along with the flyby through the station, and Troy is just the package ride. It's got great theming, a Trojan horse at the front of the ride, and it's just an all round good coaster. I would I would say it's my least favourite part of it is the twisted drop because you don't get it's it's it goes down that quite slowly, but the rest of the ride more than makes up for it. In terms of like Troy as a whole, on other rides I would compare it to. I'll compare it to like Wicker Man out on Towers, but on a more extreme scale. So if you've done Wicker Man, Troy is a much better version of that. And Troy ends up in my number 9 spot. So yeah. Number 8 we have FLY, also known as Fly. Now this is a basically a rebirth of the Vacoma Flying Dutchman coaster. But unlike those versions, this actually has a launch. It is a very snappy launch and probably one of the better launches out there. 
in terms of the ride itself, like the theming is excellent on it. The theming is unmatched with any other coaster, in my opinion. Aside from maybe one, but that's it. F fly flying throughout Rutberg is it's just incredibly scenic ride. It's a long ride and that's the one credit I will give Fantasyland. Majority of their rides are extremely long. So be prepared for that. But Fly, it's got two amazing inversions. I, I love that part where it goes um, nearly vertical and ha has its second launch, I believe. And you just go flying up there. It, it says it's named Fly. But um, in terms of like the restraints, like... I'm not a massive fan of them, like because they dig in like really tight into your shoulders. So, yeah, that, that's my opinion on fly, and it ends up being at my number eight spot. And in the number number seven spot, we have Taron. Taron is an absolutely phenomenal ride. If you ever gone Taron, you'll be surely impressed. When I before I went on it, I really underestimated this ride. I thought it was going to not be very good at all because. I thought it was going to be quite a boring layout, but the second I did it, the second I did it, I instantly regretted saying that. This coaster is phenomenal. The first launch is very good. You have a lot of helixes and airtime hills. This thing's got a lot of good solid ejector airtime, and it's a world class coaster. Also, you've got the he helixes and the the um, which are very intense as well, and then my favourite part of Taron is the second rolling launch, because you're going and uh, through it still at speed, and you're getting boosted by some more speed, you really feel that launch going whipping you forward. And yeah, Taron is just an amazing coaster. In terms of the theming, I absolutely love the theming on Taron. The rock work. It's beautiful. The rock work is un probably unmatched by anything else. Like the amount of effort that's gone into to Taron that Fantasia Land had to do, I think is unmatched. I don't think any other parks put that much care into their coaster as much as Taron has. And uh, I know a lot of people say like Taron's like the world's best coaster. I personally don't think it's the world's best coaster. Like. It's good, very good, but I wouldn't call it like the world's best. I'd say the theming is better than the actual ride itself. I mean, most of the layout is quite repetitive after a while. I mean, it crosses over its side for 108 times, giving an indication of how long this ride actually is. But yeah, Taron's just unbelievable. And if you can ever get out there to ride it, I would suggest. I would highly recommend you go and do it right now because Fantasia Land is absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, Taron ends up being at my number seven spot. And then the number six spot is Nemesis at Ralston Towers. Now Nemesis for me is kind of a hit or miss because some days I have really good rides on it and it's flying around the track and it's incredibly intense. Whereas the other days, some days I it's kind of sluggish and like doesn't have the intensity. It needs to have that speed to get around its course. I mean, I absolutely love Nemesis. Nemesis is my favourite coaster in the UK, period. In terms of the ride layout, you start off with a twisted drop, following into a corkscrew, which it actually gains some really fast speed down that first drop. That's how shallow it is. You go into then a corkscrew, followed by a, a very intense helix, might I add. Then you go down, back over the station where it does a zero G roll. You get plenty of hang time over that. Then it goes upwards, turns, does a vertical loop under the sta um, into a tunnel, back over the station towards the monorail, and then does another corkscrew, and then goes into the brake run. Now this coaster may be small, but don't underestimate it. It is one of the best Bollinger and Mavillard coasters out there. And if anyone s says anything about Nemesis like negatively, I I I'll agree with them. 
Because, I mean, so, some, some of the parts, some parts of Nemesis are not as smooth as they once were. But, in terms of the ride itself, Nemesis is a phenomenal ride. And, yeah, it, it, it was one of my first coasters I ever rode back in 2015. That's when I rode my first official big coaster. But, Nemesis will always have a place in my heart. And it will always be my one of my favourite coasters in the world. Because I, I generally believe it's one of the best coasters in the world. So yeah, Nemesis ends up being at the number 6 spot. Number 5 is Nitro. Now Nitro is one of my favourite all time coasters it is. It is an incredible B&M hyper coaster. And it's not actually my favourite um, current B&M. You fall, come off the drop, and you go straight into an, a floater airtime hill. Now this coaster is more about floater airtime than injector, but still doesn't make it any less good. And then, after the uh, first drop, you go into an airtime hill, you, and you uh, turn to the left. You then go into another airtime hill, and then into an overbank. Then, which is quite an intense part of the ride, but. Then you go into another float at airtime hill, and then another one, and then into a quite an intense helix, and then you go into a few more airtime hills before you go back into the station. Now this coaster, it, the airtime, the float, I think it's got some of the best float at airtime on any other coaster. Period. I think if you're looking for a great floater. Nitro has got it, and is one of the, probably one of the best B&M hypercoasters out there. I mean, that's the only B&M hypercoaster I've actually done, so I can't speak for others. But in terms of other hypercoasters I've done, this is one of the better ones, and it ranks at my number five spot on my list. And the number four spot is Conda of Wallaby, Belgium. Now this intermin mega coaster is absolutely phenomenal. It has the most amount of airtime on any coaster, that being 15 cases of airtime. It has, after you come off that first drop, you go into your first real airtime hill. You get a lot of it out of that first one. Then you go into another outer bank airtime hill. Following from that, you go on to your non inverting cobra roll, which it. You get some great sustained um, ejector on that, and um, it is one of the highest G moments on the ride. Following from that, you get some smaller ejector airtime hills, which actually provides some really, really powerful ejector on the coaster. After that, you go into some quite tight helixes around the ride, some more ejector airtime, and then the final part of the ride you just you just continually go up and down up and down in your seat and you're you're never in, on your seat for too long which is one of the best things about Conda there's never a dull moment on it towards the end of the ride it can get a little bit bumpy but I, I would say this coaster is near perfection the Conda is is one of the best coasters in the world and it it ranks itself here. One other thing I two other things I forgot to mention about it is the lift hill is very fast. It is actually insanely quick lift it because it's cable lift, but man you you feel like you're going like forty miles an hour up it when you're really not. But and the um the theming around the area near Conda is amazing. And I would highly recommend you check it out on Wallaby Belgium because Wallaby Belgium desperately needed this coaster. Because, and after one of it, after Conda, you've got Psyche Underground Pulsar, which really are just filler coasters. They're not really true standouts. This is a true standout coaster, and it's definitely top of my own top four, top five worthy, and it ends up in my number four spot overall. Number three spot is El Toro. Now, I really regret putting El Toro here because it, it is a fantastic ride and. The amount of ejector airtime you get on it is insane, but when I rode it, I didn't have the best ride on it, 
just from experience and that is what really makes this ranking really difficult because I don't remember my ride vague, um, vividly at all so that in combination I was tired that night and because it, I, I did have a night ride on it and it was the evening it didn't go um, too well but I have been on El Toro and for what it is for a wooden coaster it is one of the best wooden coasters I've been on it was built by Intamin which they've appeared in lots on this top 10 list and um, yeah El Toro is just insane if you've ever worn a coaster that's just full of ejector at time full of intense elements El Toro is the way to go I must admit it was running a little bit rough but I think after some retracking it should be definitely a smoother ride and I definitely need to get back on it to give it a re-ride to just check how it runs now because I didn't have the greatest ride on it so yeah I think I've got, got to go back to Six Flags Great Adventure to move it up higher and that is why it ends up at the number 3 spot on my overall list. And the number 2 spot we have Ride to Happiness. Now this coaster is absolutely pure chaos, I'm just going to say now. It was made by Mac Rides and this coaster proves that they can build strong launches. You go out the station into a slow um, Jojo roll, which it, you get some great hang time on it. You almost feel like you're going to fall out on it, it's, it's that crazy. Then um, after the Jojo roll, you head into your launch. You get hold there for a few seconds before you've been launched. You go up into this slight kind of top hat element, but it's kind of not because it's on the angle, but whatever. You still get some strong ejector airtime over this weird element, whatever it's called. Before diving back down to the most intense part of the um, ride, which is one of the most intense um, um, parts of any coaster in the world, in fact. After this you go into a banana roll, which is a uh, quite a unique element, I quite like it and it's, yeah, nothing, nothing special really. Then you go into the um, vertical loop, which that is crazy when you are spinning around on this coaster, it is, it is one of the most insane coasters you will ever ride. Following on from that you go into a zero G roll, which has hang time, uh, lots of hang time as well, not as much as the Jojo roll, but still pretty good. And after that, you go into another se uh, second LSM boost, and then you go into, into a step up under flip, which is a very unique element, and it's a uh, quite a weird one. It, it, it's a, it's a very weird element, and it's one you'll have to experience for yourself to get the full gist of it. But basically, you go up, then you go upside down, and then you fall back down. No, that's the best way I can describe it really. Uh, and then after that you get a row of three solid ejector airtime hills and then back into the station. And the amount of elements this ride has is phenomenal. This coaster has so many good strong elements and it's just an overall package ride. I just don't really know what, how else to put it. It is such a good ride. You must co You have to go and check it out at some point. That's all I'm going to say to you. And the scenery around this ride, once it all grows up, and because it is a quite new road, because it only opened this year, and um, once it all grows up and it's all lovely looking, it's, it's going to be a gorgeous area to just gaze at all day. And I mean, around the Plopsland Japan, you can see this coast from anywhere. So, yeah. And that is my overall opinion of Ride to Happiness, and it falls on my number two spot. Only just though, my number one and number two are very, very close in comparison. But my number one slightly outclasses it, and I'm pretty sure you can kind of guess what number one is going to be. And I will reveal to you that in a moment. My number one overall coaster is Untamed at Wallaby Holland. This is an R my RMC hybrid. My first RMC coaster, which stands for Rocket Mountain Dream Construction, by the way, that I ever did. And boy oh boy, it didn't disappoint. This coaster 
is absolutely insane. You go over that first, you go out the station, which gets your heart beating already because of those heart beating sounds that it makes when you exit the station, into an outer bank turn, up a lift hill, and then you get whipped over that down that lift till you get so much sustained ejector it's crazy how much you get over that hill then you have a little bunny hop which does provide a little bit of ejector airtime but not as much or as prevalent as the first drop after that you have the um, quite unique element on this ride a double inverted stall which is quite good you get some good hand time on it then you go to the step up a step up under flip, which is the same element that's on Ride Happiness, just on an RMC hybrid, of course. And yeah, and that's that's quite a good part of the ride. Still, quite a lot of hang time on it. After that, you go on to a overbank inversion. That's a well, before prior to that, you, you go over an airtime hill. There's an outer bank airtime hill. And then into a double up. Then into a double down. Then up into a overbank inversion you turn around and it's kind of an L-shaped layout and then after you turn around you then just go into airtime after airtime after airtime after airtime after airtime after airtime after air after, air uh, after all that airtime you then go into the final um, inversion a barrel roll then you go up into lift um, up into the station which you get some insane ejector on that final like hill uh, into the playground. This ride never relents. It's unrelenting. It's wild. It's crazy. It's it's an RMC hybrid. If you've never been on an RMC hybrid before, you have to get on one. These things are really intense, and it, people aren't lying when they say. These things have great ejector at a time. And what's cool about Untamed as well, it's actually a record holder in itself. It has the most inversions on a hybrid coaster, so you got that point, those points um, towards it. And it's just a beautiful looking ride. I mean, with this coaster, just everything about it is near perfection. Now, the one thing I will critique about this um, RMC hybrid coaster is the trains. The trains aren't so good, the trains are quite uncomfortable, especially after all that strong ejector airtime, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything about the layout, or, or anything really, and I wouldn't sacrifice any airtime for, for um, better restraints to be honest. This ride is perfection, I um, said it right there, it is perfection. And it is my number one overall coaster. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Please like and subscribe. It will really help my channel out and help develop my channel. And please, if you want to, please give me some tips on how to improve. I would really appreciate that. Some constructive criticism so I can make the videos better in the future. And to present them and to get better at YouTube. Because... This is my second video and I've never done anything like this before so please give, give me some advice and help this channel out. And with that, see you later Josers. Bye for now.